Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. In the New Covenant, we have boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies by a new and living way. For so long, I was just always reaching out towards God. Where are you, Lord? But when I heard Andrew's message, it was just like the light bulb went off, and I just like knew God is here with us. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my last day in the first week of teaching on spirit, soul, and body. I tell you, I love this. This is what the Lord used to change my life. This is the revelation that just transformed me. And basically, everything I teach comes out of this truth that God taught me. I tell you, it's been powerful. And we've already covered this for four days. Um, I've said things that if if somebody would have told me these things 50-something years ago, it would have just made a radical difference. The Lord showed this to me by revelation. I didn't learn it through some person. But if some person would have come along and have taught me this, man, what that could have done to my life. I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS SETTING PEOPLE FREE. SO IF YOU'VE MISSED ANY OF IT, PLEASE GET THE MATERIALS. YOU CAN GO TO OUR WEBSITE AND YOU CAN LOOK AT THE PAST BROADCAST. IT WOULD BE A REAL BLESSING TO YOU. WHAT I WANT TO DO TODAY IS JUST CONTINUE TO TALK ABOUT THIS. AGAIN, I WISHED I HAD TIME TO PUT ALL OF THIS IN ITS PROPER PERSPECTIVE, BUT um, I'VE ALREADY SPENT FOUR DAYS TEACHING ON THIS. I JUST CAN'T GO BACK THROUGH IT. REAL QUICKLY, I SAID FROM 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 17, THAT IF ANY MAN BE IN CHRIST, HE'S A NEW CREATURE. OLD THINGS ARE PASSED AWAY. IT DIDN'T SAY ARE PASSING AWAY, BUT ARE PASSED AWAY. BEHOLD, ALL THINGS ARE BECOME NEW. NOT BECOMING NEW, BUT ARE BECOME NEW. YOU CAN'T SEE THAT IN THE NATURAL REALM. YOU CAN'T PERCEIVE IT BY LOOKING IN THE MIRROR OR SEARCHING YOUR MIND AND YOUR EMOTIONS. BUT IN THE SPIRIT REALM, YOU ARE A BRAND NEW PERSON. AND THE ONLY WAY YOU CAN SEE WHAT'S TRUE IN THE SPIRIT IS TO LOOK IN THE WORD. JESUS SAID, THE WORDS THAT I SPEAK UNTO YOU, THEY ARE SPIRIT, AND THEY ARE LIFE. GOD'S WORD IS SPIRIT. IT'S THE WAY THAT YOU PERCEIVE SPIRITUAL THINGS. YOU CAN'T GO BY HOW YOU FEEL. IT CAN'T BE DISCERNED CARNALLY. IT HAS TO BE PRESERVED BY, uh, PERCEIVED BY FAITH IN WHAT THE WORD OF GOD HAS TO SAY. AND SO ANYWAY, I WISH I HAD TIME TO GO BACK THROUGH ALL OF THAT. LET ME JUST GIVE YOU ONE MORE EXAMPLE OF WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT HERE. IT SAYS, BUT THE FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT IS LOVE, JOY, PEACE, LONG-SUFFERING, GENTLENESS, GOODNESS, FAITH, MEEKNESS, TEMPERANCE. AGAINST SUCH THERE IS NO LAW. THIS IS SAYING THAT THE FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT, AND YOU KNOW, HERE IT'S GOT A CAPITAL S REFERRING TO THE HOLY SPIRIT. THIS IS WHAT THE HOLY SPIRIT PRODUCES IN OUR LIFE. BUT I GO BACK TO A VERSE THAT I USED YESTERDAY IN 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 6, VERSE 17. HE THAT IS JOINED UNTO THE LORD IS ONE SPIRIT. AND THE WORD ONE THERE IS THE GREEK WORD HES, H-E-I-S, AND IT MEANS A SINGULAR ONE TO THE EXCLUSION OF ANOTHER. SO WHAT THIS MEANS IS THAT IN THE SPIRIT REALM, THERE IS NO DIFFERENCE BETWEEN THE HOLY SPIRIT AND YOUR BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT. HE THAT'S JOINED UNTO THE LORD IS ONE SPIRIT. WHAT IS TRUE OF THE SPIRIT IS ALSO TRUE OF YOUR BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT BECAUSE YOU WERE RECREATED IN HIS IMAGE. SO THE FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT, WHETHER IT'S THE HOLY SPIRIT OR YOUR BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT, THIS IS WHO YOU ARE. THIS IS WHAT YOU ARE LIKE IN THE SPIRIT REALM. YOU ARE FULL OF LOVE, JOY, PEACE, LONG-SUFFERING, GENTLENESS, GOODNESS, FAITH, MEEKNESS, AND TEMPERANCE. THIS IS WHAT'S IN YOUR SPIRIT. AND HERE IS A MAJOR PROBLEM. THERE ARE SOME OF YOU LISTENING TO THIS AND THINKING, WELL, THAT'S NOT ME. NO, THAT'S THE BORN AGAIN YOU. AND HERE'S THE PROBLEM, THAT YOU DON'T HAVE YOUR NEW IDENTITY IN CHRIST AS THE DOMINANT THING. YOU you RELATE MORE TO THE WAY YOU WERE BROUGHT UP. I'VE HAD PEOPLE SAY BEFORE, WELL, IT'S JUST A CHARACTER TRAIT OF OUR TYPE OF FAMILY. WE'RE JUST BLUNT. WE JUST SAY THESE THINGS. WE ARE SOMETIMES ROUGH AND OFFENSIVE. NO, WHAT YOU ARE IS CARNAL. IT'S NOT IN YOUR GENES. YOU DON'T HAVE TO BE THAT WAY. IT'S AN ACQUIRED, LEARNED BEHAVIOR. AND YOU ARE IDENTIFYING WITH THE WAY THAT YOU WERE RAISED. MAYBE THE PEOPLE IN YOUR FAMILY DIDN'T SHOW MUCH AFFECTION. THEY'RE JUST VERY HARD PEOPLE. AND SO YOU SAY, WELL, I JUST DON'T HAVE LOVE. THAT'S NOT THE WAY THAT WE OPERATE. 
WELL, WHAT YOU'RE DOING, YOU'RE JUST BEING CARNAL. AND I KNOW THAT THERE'S PEOPLE THAT TAKE OFFENSE AT THIS AND SAY, YOU'RE CHALLENGING ME. I'M CHALLENGING YOUR CARNAL IDENTITY. I'M TELLING YOU THAT IN CHRIST, YOU HAVE LOVE, THE SAME LOVE THAT JESUS USED WHEN HE WAS HERE ON THIS EARTH. YOU KNOW, I HAVEN'T GOT TIME TO DO IT TODAY, BUT IF I WAS PREACHING IN A REGULAR SERVICE, I WOULD TURN OVER TO 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 13, VERSES 4 THROUGH 8, AND I WOULD SHOW YOU WHAT GOD'S KIND OF LOVE IS LIKE. IT'S PATIENT AND IT'S KIND. IT DOESN'T EVEN TAKE NOTICE OF AN OFFENSE THAT come. IT'S NOT SELF-CENTERED. IT'S NOT PUFFED UP. IT DOESN'T SEEK ITS OWN. ALL OF THESE THINGS THAT ARE LISTED, DID YOU KNOW THAT THAT'S THE WAY THAT YOU ARE IN YOUR SPIRIT? AND SOME OF YOU ARE THINKING, WELL, NO, I'M NOT LIKE THAT. WELL, YES, YOU ARE. AND THIS IS A PROBLEM. YOU DON'T KNOW WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST. YOU HAVEN'T STEPPED OVER INTO YOUR NEW IDENTITY. YOU'RE LIVING OUT OF YOUR FLESH. AND SOME OF YOU THINK, WELL, I WAS ABUSED WHEN I WAS A CHILD, AND SO BECAUSE OF THAT, I'M JUST GOING TO LIMP THROUGH LIFE. THAT'S BECAUSE YOU ARE LIVING CARNALLY. AND AGAIN, I KNOW THAT PEOPLE TAKE OFFENSE AT THIS WORD CARNAL AND THINK IT'S SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER TALKING ABOUT EVIL, DEMONIC OR SOMETHING. NO, THE WORD CARNAL JUST MEANS OF THE FIVE SENSES. YOU ARE LIVING OUT OF YOUR, WHAT YOU CAN SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL. YOU'RE LIVING OUT OF YOUR OWN EMOTIONS, AND YOU'RE JUST LIVING BASED ON WHAT'S HAPPENED TO YOU. I'M TELLING YOU, you, WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN IN THE SPIRIT, YOU ARE A BRAND NEW PERSON THAT HAS LOVE, JOY, AND PEACE, AND ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS. AND YOU CAN CHOOSE TO OPERATE BY THAT. IT TAKES A RENEWING OF THE MIND. IT'S NOT JUST LIKE YOU FLIP A SWITCH AND IT'S AUTOMATICALLY DONE. IN THE SPIRIT, YOU'RE CHANGED INSTANTLY THE MOMENT YOU GET BORN AGAIN, BUT IT HAS TO RENEW YOUR MIND. IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 12, VERSE 2, DON'T BE CONFORMED TO THIS WORLD IN OTHER WORDS, DON'T BE CUT OUT OF THE SAME PATTERN, POURED INTO THE SAME MOLD AS THE WAY THE WORLD OPERATES, BUT BE TRANSFORMED BY THE RENEWING OF YOUR MIND. THE WAY YOU GET THIS TRANSFORMATION, THE WAY YOU GET THIS NEW LIFE THAT'S IN YOUR SPIRIT OUT INTO YOUR PHYSICAL BODY IS THROUGH THE RENEWING OF YOUR MIND. AND THAT'S WHAT THESE PROGRAMS ARE DOING. IF YOU CAN FOLLOW WHAT I'M SAYING, IF YOU WILL ALLOW THE HOLY SPIRIT TO CONFIRM THESE TRUTHS THAT I'M SAYING TO YOU, THIS WILL TRANSFORM YOU THROUGH THE RENEWING OF YOUR MIND. YOUR SPIRIT, IF YOU'RE BORN AGAIN, YOUR SPIRIT'S ALREADY CHANGED. AND IN THE SPIRIT, YOU HAVE LOVE, JOY, PEACE, ALL OF THESE THINGS, BUT YOU HAVE TO RENEW YOUR MIND TO IT. YOU GOT TO GET RID OF THIS THINKING ABOUT SAYING, WELL, I'M A SMITH, AND SMITHS HAVE ALWAYS BEEN THIS WAY. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT YOUR RELATIVES HAVE DONE. IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW YOU WERE RAISED. IT DOESN'T MATTER IF YOU'VE BEEN ABUSED. IT DOESN'T MATTER IF PEOPLE HAVE TREATED YOU BADLY BECAUSE OF THE COLOR OF YOUR SKIN OR BECAUSE OF SOMETHING THAT YOU'VE DONE WRONG. IT DOESN'T MATTER IF YOU'VE BEEN IN PRISON AND IF YOU'VE GOT A RAP SHEET THAT'S LONG. THAT'S NOT WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST. YOU ARE A BRAND NEW PERSON. AND THE KEY TO THE CHRISTIAN LIFE IS TO STEP OUT OF THIS OLD YOU AND START LIVING LIKE THE NEW YOU. YOU KNOW, EVERY TIME I TEACH ON THIS, OUR MAIL FROM PRISONERS JUST GOES THROUGH THE ROOF. BECAUSE THERE'S A LOT OF PRISONERS THAT WHEN THEY GET CAUGHT AND WHEN THEY ARE FACED WITH GOING TO PRISON, ALL OF A SUDDEN THEY RECOGNIZE THAT THE WAY THEY'VE CHOSEN TO DO THINGS ISN'T WORKING. THEY CRY OUT TO GOD FOR HELP. THEY ASK GOD FOR FORGIVENESS. AND MANY TIMES THEY WILL EVEN FEEL A RELIEF OF THAT BURDEN AND GUILT. BUT THEN THEY'RE EVERY DAY JUST FACED WITH THE FACT THAT, LOOK WHAT I'VE DONE. THEY'RE STILL IN PRISON BECAUSE THEY'RE BORN AGAIN. THEY DIDN'T GET OUT OF PRISON. THEY STILL ARE TREATED BADLY. THEY STILL HAVE PEOPLE REMIND THEM OF ALL OF THE THINGS THAT THEY'VE DONE WRONG. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? PRISONERS MANY TIMES DO GET BORN AGAIN, BUT THEN THEY JUST STRUGGLE BECAUSE they're, THEY'RE JUST CONSTANTLY BEING CONFRONTED WITH THEIR FAILURES. AND WHEN I MINISTER ON WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST AND THAT YOU CAN STEP OVER INTO THE SPIRIT AND IN THE SPIRIT YOU'VE NEVER SINNED, YOU'RE AS HOLY AND PURE AS JESUS IS. GOD IS A SPIRIT. HE RELATES TO YOU SPIRIT TO SPIRIT. AND HE SEES YOU DIFFERENTLY. HE'S NOT DEALING WITH YOU ANY LONGER OVER WHAT YOU'VE DONE. AND THERE'S STILL CONSEQUENCES. YOU MAY STILL BE IN JAIL. YOU, aren't, you CAN'T JUST, YOU KNOW, uh, DO A JAIL BREAK AND GET OUT BECAUSE YOU'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN. NO, YOU'VE GOT SOME THINGS THAT YOU'VE GOT TO DEAL WITH. BUT GOD NOW SEES YOU AND DEALS WITH YOU SPIRIT TO SPIRIT. AND EVERY TIME I GO TO MINISTERING ON THIS, THE PRISONER RESPONSE JUST GOES WAY UP BECAUSE THIS IS SOMETHING THAT THEY'RE, they're DEALING WITH CONSTANTLY. YOU MAY NOT BE BEHIND BARS, BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? MANY OF US DEAL WITH THE SAME THING. WE'VE DONE THINGS THAT HAVE WRONG. THEY'VE, they've SEPARATED US FROM OUR 
OUR PARENTS, SOMETIMES SEPARATED YOU FROM A PREVIOUS MATE, SEPARATED YOU FROM YOUR CHILDREN, SEPARATED YOU FROM YOUR JOB. Uh, YOU'VE HAD ALL OF THESE THINGS HAPPEN, AND YOU JUST CONSTANTLY ARE DEALING WITH THIS, AND YOU LIVE WITH A SENSE OF GUILT AND CONDEMNATION WHEN THE BIBLE SAYS THAT THERE IS THEREFORE NOW NO CONDEMNATION TO THEM WHO ARE IN CHRIST JESUS. THAT'S TALKING ABOUT YOUR POSITION IN CHRIST, IN THE SPIRIT. THERE IS NO CONDEMNATION. AND YET MANY OF YOU JUST LIVE WITH CONDEMNATION, THINKING THAT IT'S NORMAL. HEBREWS CHAPTER 10, VERSE 2 SAYS THAT BECAUSE OF WHAT JESUS DID, WE SHOULD HAVE NO MORE CONSCIENCE OF SIN. THAT'S A RADICAL THOUGHT. THAT'S A THOUGHT THAT THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN uh, DOESN'T EVEN BELIEVE IS OBTAINABLE, MUCH LESS SOMETHING THAT THEY'RE WALKING IN. THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN BELIEVES THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER GOING AROUND FEELING THEIR UNWORTHINESS AND, and uh, YOU KNOW, THEY'LL SAY THINGS LIKE, OH, GOD, WE'RE JUST AN OLD SINNER SAVED BY GRACE. NO, I WAS AN OLD SINNER, BUT I GOT SAVED BY GRACE, AND NOW I AM THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD. EPHESIANS 4, 24, MY NEW MAN WAS CREATED IN RIGHTEOUSNESS AND TRUE HOLINESS. AS JESUS IS, SO AM I IN THIS WORLD. MAN, IF YOU UNDERSTAND THIS, IT'LL JUST SET YOU FREE FROM SO MUCH. SO IN THE SPIRIT, YOU HAVE LOVE, JOY, PEACE, LONG-SUFFERING, GENTLENESS, GOODNESS, FAITH, MEEKNESS, AND TEMPERANCE. YOU KNOW, LET ME GIVE YOU AN EXAMPLE OF THIS, THAT WHEN MY WIFE AND I MOVED TO PRITCHETT, COLORADO, AND TOOK OVER A CHURCH THERE, WE WEREN'T THERE VERY LONG UNTIL I HAD PEOPLE THAT WERE LYING ABOUT ME. I DIDN'T EVEN TAKE A SALARY FROM THE CHURCH. I WORKED FOR FREE, AND YET I HAD PEOPLE SAY THAT I WAS STEALING MONEY FROM THE CHURCH. THEY ACCUSED ME OF GETTING DRUNK. THEY ACCUSED ME OF DOING DOPE. THEY ACCUSED ME OF HAVING SEXUAL AFFAIRS. I MEAN, THEY WERE JUST SAYING THINGS ABOUT ME THAT WERE... THERE WAS NO BASIS WHATSOEVER. AND I HAD LEFT CHILDRESS, TEXAS, WHICH WE DIDN'T HAVE A BIG CHURCH, BUT FOR THE FIRST TIME IN MY LIFE, WE HAD ABOUT 40 OR 50 PEOPLE COMING TO CHURCH, AND MY WIFE AND I WERE EATING ON A REGULAR BASIS. IT LOOKED LIKE WE WERE GOING TO LIVE AND NOT DIE, AND YET I WENT TO PRITCHETT, COLORADO, FOR ABOUT 10 PEOPLE IN THE CHURCH. I LEFT A CHURCH THAT WAS RUNNING 40 OR 50, WHICH I KNOW SOME PEOPLE THINK THAT'S NOTHING, BUT, MAN, COMING FROM WHERE I CAME FROM, WE WERE... WE WERE LIVING. WE WERE SURVIVING FOR THE FIRST TIME. AND I GAVE ALL THAT UP, WENT TO A PLACE, TOOK NO SALARY, AND I WASN'T THERE A MONTH UNTIL I HAD ALL KINDS OF PEOPLE LYING ABOUT ME, DOING THINGS, TRYING TO RUN ME OUT OF THE CHURCH. AND I JUST GOT TO FEELING SORRY FOR MYSELF. AND ONE NIGHT, I WAS JUST SO DISCOURAGED THAT I WAS WAITING ON JAMIE AND MY TWO BOYS TO GO TO SLEEP, AND THEN I WAS GOING TO GO DOWN INTO THE BASEMENT, AND I WAS GOING TO HAVE A PITY PARTY. I'D ALREADY SENT OUT ALL OF MY INVITATIONS. ALL OF THE DEMONS IN BACA COUNTY, Cal uh, COLORADO, WERE THERE WAITING ON ME, AND I WAS GOING TO GO DOWN AND JUST WHINE AND GRIPE AND COMPLAIN ABOUT HOW UNFAIR IT WAS AND LOOK AT THE WAY PEOPLE WERE TREATING ME. AND SO, WHILE I WAS WAITING ON MY WIFE AND KIDS TO GO to, TO BED, I JUST FIXED MYSELF SOME TEA, AND I WAS SITTING AT THE KITCHEN TABLE, AND I WAS WAITING, AND I JUST FLOPPED MY BIBLE OPEN, AND IT JUST HAPPENED TO FALL OPEN TO GALATIANS 5, 22 AND 23, THAT THE FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT IS LOVE, JOY, PEACE. AND WHEN I SAW THIS, I, I, I REMEMBERED EXACTLY THE THINGS I'M TEACHING YOU, THAT IN MY SPIRIT, I'M ALWAYS FULL OF LOVE, JOY, AND PEACE. AND IF I AM NOT FEELING JOY AND PEACE, IT'S NOT BECAUSE THE SPIRIT HAS QUIT FUNCTIONING IN THOSE REALMS, IT'S BECAUSE I'M NOT IN THE SPIRIT, I'M IN THE FLESH. I'M GOING BY WHAT I FEEL. I'M FOCUSED ON WHAT PEOPLE ARE SAYING ABOUT ME INSTEAD OF WHAT GOD WAS SAYING ABOUT ME. AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, SEE, ALL OF THESE TRUTHS BEGIN TO START FLOODING ME. AND TO BE HONEST WITH YOU, I DIDN'T WANT TO HEAR THIS. BECAUSE I KNOW THAT SOME OF YOU <laughs> WILL RELATE TO THIS, BUT SOMETIMES WHEN YOU'RE DISCOURAGED, YOU JUST THINK THAT IF YOU JUST BLEH, you, know, YOU JUST PUT IT ALL OUT THERE. IT'S LIKE THROWING UP. YOU GET IT OUT AND GET IT OVER WITH AND YOU'LL FEEL BETTER. AND SOMETIMES WE THINK THAT JUST HAVING A PITY PARTY AND GRIPING AND COMPLAINING IS GOING TO MAKE ME FEEL BETTER. I WAS LOOKING FORWARD TO GETTING DOWN AND JUST TELLING THE LORD HOW UNFAIR EVERYTHING WAS AND GRIPING AND COMPLAINING. AND SO I REALLY DIDN'T WANT TO GAIN CONTROL OF MY EMOTIONS. BUT AS I SAT THERE AND LOOKED AT THIS, IT WAS JUST CLEAR. THE LORD WAS TELLING ME, ARE YOU GOING TO OPERATE IN THE FLESH? 
ARE YOU GOING TO GO BY WHAT YOU FEEL? Or ARE YOU GOING TO GO BY WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS ABOUT YOU? AND I SAT THERE AND THOUGHT ABOUT IT. BY THE TIME JAMIE AND THE BOYS GOT TO BED, YOU KNOW WHAT, I WENT DOWN INTO THE BASEMENT AND INSTEAD OF COMPLAINING, I STARTED JUST PRAISING GOD. AT FIRST, IT WAS FORCED BECAUSE I DIDN'T FEEL LIKE PRAISING GOD. BUT I KNEW THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, I WILL BLESS THE LORD AT ALL TIMES. PSALMS CHAPTER 34, HIS PRAISE SHALL CONTINUALLY BE IN MY MOUTH. MY SOUL SHALL MAKE HER BOAST IN THE LORD. THE HUMBLE SHALL HEAR THEREOF AND BE GLAD. O oh, MAGNIFY THE LORD WITH ME AND LET US EXALT HIS NAME TOGETHER. FOR I SOUGHT THE LORD AND HE HEARD ME AND DELIVERED ME FROM ALL MY FEARS. AND SO I STARTED PRAISING GOD BY FAITH THROUGH GRITTED TEETH. I DIDN'T FEEL LIKE IT, BUT I STARTED DOING IT. AND I STARTED SAYING, I AM BLESSED, AND GOD, YOU LOVE ME, AND IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT PEOPLE HAVE TO SAY ABOUT ME. I KNOW THAT YOU SENT ME HERE. AND I JUST STARTED PRAISING GOD. AND IT WASN'T VERY LONG UNTIL ALL OF A SUDDEN, THIS LOVE AND JOY AND PEACE THAT WAS IN MY SPIRIT, AND IT WAS THERE ALL ALONG, IT STARTED TAKING PREEMINENCE OVER WHAT I FELT IN MY SOUL AND IN MY BODY. AND I ACTUALLY BEGAN TO START FEELING THE JOY OF THE LORD. AND I STARTED PRAISING GOD, NO LONGER THROUGH GRITTED TEETH, BUT DOING IT BECAUSE I ACTUALLY WAS EXCITED, SAYING, GOD, I DON'T KNOW HOW ALL THIS IS GOING TO WORK OUT, BUT YOU SENT ME HERE, IT'LL WORK OUT. AND I JUST STARTED PRAISING GOD. AND YOU KNOW, AS I LOOK BACK, I, be I REALLY BELIEVE THAT THAT WAS A TURNING POINT. IF I WOULD HAVE SUCCUMBED TO JUST MY EMOTIONS AND LET WHAT I FELT DOMINATE ME INSTEAD OF WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS WAS TRUE IN MY SPIRIT. I BELIEVE THAT THAT COULD HAVE BEEN A GRAVEYARD FOR ME. Pritchett, COLORADO ONLY HAD 144 PEOPLE IN IT AT THAT TIME, AND WE HAD ABOUT 10 PEOPLE IN THE CHURCH WHEN I WENT THERE. AND WE SAW A MAN RAISED FROM THE DEAD, AND WE HAD 100 PEOPLE START COMING TO CHURCH, AND YOU KNOW WHAT? THAT'S, that's WHERE MY MINISTRY ACTUALLY TOOK OFF. THAT'S WHERE WE INCORPORATED ANDREW WOMACK MINISTRIES. THAT'S WHERE I WENT ON THE RADIO AND STARTED IN, uh, I THINK THAT WOULD HAVE BEEN, WELL, I'D BEEN ON THE RADIO BRIEFLY IN CHILDRES, TEXAS, BUT THAT'S WHERE I STARTED MY MINISTRY AND CONTINUED IT FOR OVER 30-SOMETHING YEARS. EVERYTHING CHANGED, AND IT COULD HAVE BEEN A GRAVEYARD. IT COULD HAVE BEEN THE END OF MY MINISTRY IF I'D HAVE GIVEN IN TO IT. AND YOU KNOW WHAT BROUGHT ME THROUGH? WAS UNDERSTANDING THAT IN THE SPIRIT, I HAD A CHOICE. SEE, SOME PEOPLE, WHEN THEY FEEL SOMETHING SO PASSIONATELY AND THEY FEEL DISCOURAGEMENT, THEY FEEL ANGER, THEY FEEL BITTERNESS, THEY SAY, I'M JUST BEING HONEST. I KNOW I SHOULDN'T BE THIS WAY, BUT THIS IS JUST REALITY. THIS IS WHO I AM. NO, WHAT YOU'RE BEING IS BEING CARNAL. YOU'RE BEING DOMINATED BY WHAT YOU SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL. IF YOU ARE BORN AGAIN, THE TRUTH IS THAT IN YOUR SPIRIT YOU HAVE LOVE, JOY, AND PEACE. YOU HAVE LOVE FOR THE VERY PERSON THAT IN THE MOMENT YOU ARE HATING AND FEELING THIS ANGER TOWARDS YOUR... IT'S YOUR FLESH THAT FEELS THAT WAY, THE CARNAL, UNSAVED PART OF YOU. BUT THE PART OF YOU THAT'S BORN AGAIN, YOU HAVE THE SAME LOVE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU THAT JESUS HAD WHEN HE SAID, FATHER, FORGIVE THEM, FOR THEY KNOW NOT WHAT THEY DO. AND THEN STEPHEN SAID, LORD, LAY NOT THIS SIN TO THEIR CHARGE. YOU HAVE THAT SAME SPIRIT ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. AND YOU CAN CHOOSE TO OPERATE IN THAT, OR YOU CAN CHOOSE TO OPERATE IN THE FLESH. IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 8, TO BE CARNALLY MINDED IS DEATH, BUT TO BE SPIRITUALLY MINDED IS LIFE AND PEACE. IF YOU LET YOUR FEELINGS, YOUR CARNAL MIND, YOUR CARNAL EMOTIONS DOMINATE YOU, IT ONLY PRODUCES DEATH. BUT IF YOU OPERATE IN THE SPIRIT, IT ONLY PRODUCES LIFE AND PEACE. AND SO YOU'VE GOT A CHOICE. AND MAN, THIS HAS JUST REVOLUTIONIZED MY LIFE. SOME OF YOU WATCHING THIS, YOU DON'T KNOW THAT YOU HAVE A CHOICE. YOU THINK, BUT I FEEL THIS. THAT'S JUST THE WAY IT IS. I'M, I'm NOT GOING TO BE A HYPOCRITE. I'M TELLING YOU HOW I REALLY FEEL. WELL, IT DEPENDS ON WHO YOU THINK IS THE REAL YOU. IF YOU THINK THAT WHAT YOU FEEL, IF YOU THINK THAT THAT FEELING IN YOUR BODY, THIS PAIN, IF YOU THINK THAT THE FEELING IN YOUR EMOTIONS, THE GRIEF THAT YOU HAVE, THE ANGER, THE BITTERNESS, IF YOU THINK THAT THAT'S THE REAL YOU, IF THAT'S YOUR IDENTITY, WELL, THEN YES, YOU WOULD BE HYPOCRITICAL TO ACT ANY DIFFERENTLY. BUT IF YOU CAN UNDERSTAND THAT IN CHRIST, YOU BECOME A NEW PERSON, AND THAT IN THE SPIRIT, YOU ARE IDENTICAL TO JESUS. AND WHAT IS THAT SPIRIT LIKE? IT'S GOT LOVE, JOY, PEACE, ALL OF THIS FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT. IF THAT'S WHAT YOU CONSIDER TO BE THE REAL YOU, THEN YOU'RE A HYPOCRITE TO LET YOUR EMOTIONS DOMINATE YOU. YOU'RE A HYPOCRITE WHEN SOMEBODY SLAPS YOU TO JUST SIT THERE AND GET ANGRY AT THEM. IF YOU ARE IN THE SPIRIT. NOW, IF YOU'RE IN THE FLESH, 
you would be a hypocrite not to respond. But you can walk in the Spirit. And I know some people are thinking, wow, that's just theory. You can't do that. I remember being in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I was witnessing to a man on the street, and he had a big old wad of chewing tobacco, and he was yelling at me, and he just spit that whole wad of chewing tobacco right in my face, and it dripped right down my shirt and stuff. And I guarantee you, I felt things in my flesh. I didn't feel like saying, bless you, brother. I felt like punching his lights out. But because I know what the Word says, I'm able to sit there. I've got a choice. And I thought, am I going to operate in the flesh and just respond in anger and bitterness, or am I going to operate out of my spirit? And you could ask the people that were with me. I was able to wipe that off my face. I was able to continue to talk to this guy about the love of God, and I never missed a beat. I just kept going. Now, I can guarantee, I don't know about you, but that's not normal for me. That's not the way that I would have responded normally. But see, I now know that I'm a different person. I now have a revelation that there's a spirit part of me on the inside that is completely separated from what I feel. And I just don't care how I feel. I am going to dominate my life based on what the Word of God says about me. And the Bible says that I have love, joy, and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance on the inside of me. And that's how I'm going to act. And some of you think, well, I, I'm just trying to be real. What you're being is real carnal, real fleshly. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It's not faith to be in the flesh. It's faith to walk by who you are in Christ. It's faith to stand on what God says about you instead of what you feel. It's faith that the Bible says you've been healed by the stripes of Jesus and the doctor says you're going to die. Are you going to go by what the doctor says? Are you going to let your emotions come and grief and sorrow and things like this? Or are you going to stand in what the Word says? By stripes I'm healed. And even if for some reason you couldn't access all of that healing, well, then the Word says you're going to go forever, live in eternity in a mansion. And it's so awesome there that Paul says, man, I'm having a a fight staying here. I have a desire to depart and go to heaven, but I'm going to stay here for you, for your benefit. If you were thinking according to what the Word says, which is what the Spirit, the born-again part of you is saying, you wouldn't fall apart like a $2 suitcase when they tell you that you're going to die. When somebody spits in your face, you'd be able to go beyond that and operate out of your spirit instead of out of your flesh. When people criticize you and are trying to put you down and lying about you, instead of having a pity party and griping, you could sit there and start rejoicing and going by what God says about you instead of what people have to say about you. I tell you, this is a key to my life. This is what's turned my life around. Have you lost all hope? Is your world falling apart? Don't quit. The Christian life isn't difficult. It's not hard. It's impossible. For you in yourself. And the good news is, God didn't leave you by yourself. Our South Africa Prayer Department is here to serve you. Call us Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. on plus 27 or contact us via WhatsApp or Telegram on plus 27 today. Are you wanting to enjoy a life-transforming experience and discover the purpose God has for your life, but don't have the time to attend Bible college on a full-time or part-time basis? Caris can now come to your front door. Caris offers correspondence, eCaris, and Caris online distance learning options that you can enjoy from your home. Relax, study at your own pace or in a group setting and see your life transformed. Visit awmsa.net or give us a call on plus 27 to begin your life-transforming journey. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. That's gospeltruth.tv. It's an internet-based television network, and you are not only going to get my teaching, 
but you are also going to hear instructors from Karis Bible College. You've got well-known people on there like Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, Keith Moore. These are all people that are friends of mine. We have differences and variances, but we're all preaching the same thing, and it's a safe place to be. You are going to be blessed. So check it out. It's 24-7, gospeltruth.tv. We believe you've been blessed watching this African version of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack Ministries maintains offices in Cape Town, South Africa, Harare, Zimbabwe, and Kampala, Uganda. To receive today's teaching in either a CD or DVD album, or for more information about Andrew Womack Ministries, visit either the South Africa website at awmsa.net the Zimbabwe website at awmzim.net, or stop by the bookstore in Kampala at Park Royal Mall on Bugunda Road. That's shop 117, plot 26 on the ground floor. You can also call the bookstore office in Kampala at 256-778-5565-70. While visiting our websites or our bookstore, you'll also find many of Andrew's additional books and teaching materials available for purchase. I'd like to say hello to all of you that are watching the Gospel Truth in Africa and let you know that we have offices now in Uganda and in Zimbabwe and in South Africa. And we have Karis Bible Colleges in all of those places. And there's just a lot of ways that we can minister to you And so I'd like to make you aware of this and have you contact those local offices, also participate in Karis Bible College because we are there to help you and these offices are there to be able to get the materials to you quicker. So check it out. We'll have all the information right there on your screen. But man, we are excited about what God is doing in Africa and I am really blessed to be a part of it. Karis Bible College is an extension of Andrew Womack Ministries. It equips God's people for the work of the ministry by training disciples to know who they are in Christ and to share this good news with the rest of the world. To learn more about a Karis Bible College near you, visit awmsa.net or cbc.awmzim.net. Or if you'd like to attend Karis Bible College in Kampala, stop by the Kampala Bookstore at Park Royal Mall on Bugunda Road. That's shop 117, plot 26 on the ground floor. You can also call for more information about Karis Bible College in Kampala at 256-778-556-570. If you've been blessed by Andrew Womack Ministries, we ask that you consider becoming a partner with one of the ministry offices near you. To find out how you can partner with Andrew Womack Ministries in Africa, visit either the South Africa office at awmsa.net, the Zimbabwe office at awmzim.net, or you can contact the Uganda office by calling 256-778-5565-70 or emailing awmiug1 at gmail.com. We hope to hear from you today.